Aquarius 20, a big white dove, a message bearer. Now, Dane Rudyard says this, that every spiritual step is a result of a victory over forces of inertia or destruction. And I think it's important for us to remember that one of the, if not the, leading astrologer of our age, in fact, really, of any age, is Dane Rudyard. There are some other names of astrologers who are really excellent. And in every case, they share something in common, and that is that they all teach of a spiritual perspective of life. Astrology is a spiritual practice. It is not widely taught as such, it is not widely understood as such, but the, the big names, the names that win our deserved respect, they teach a, of spiritual principles. Across the board, the white dove represents the same spiritual principle. It's, it's the Holy Spirit. It's the sense of peace and love and harmony and joy and graciousness. It, it, it's that sense of like, yeah, this is, this is the right way to be at the highest level. And the reluctance that the general population has to tune into that is remarkable, totally remarkable. The forces of advertising and, and capitalism and, and communism and um, all, all these kind of political forces and, and commercial forces are so powerful that they have actually collectively persuaded the general population not to believe in something which is intuitively obvious that is really, really good to have a spiritual dimension to life. Nothing to do with morality or right and wrong or, or even truth or false. Um, perhaps those questions can come in also, but it's actually really lovely to have a spiritual approach to life. And when you actually affirm faith over doubt and fear and anxiety, when you say, that, no, 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 those are negativities, that's a destruction of the mind. That which is negative in your thinking is a destructive fa factor, and it's cancerous too. The mind, if it holds on to a negative thought, that makes another negative thought more likely, and a third, and a fourth, and a millionth, until the mind is pretty much corrupted into negativity. And this is not just the poor unusual case. This is prevalent. This is pretty much most people. It is very few people indeed who actually have overcome this negativity of mind. And, and yet it is fundamental. We, we create everything that we have, all that we get in physical terms and all that we get in perceptual terms and our emotions, all of this, everything that we have and we call our life, everything begins with the mind. And if the mind is cancerous, in other words, it degenerates into negative attitudes, default condition, <clears throat> then your, your life is going to be cancerous in some way or another. I'm speaking dramatically and, and underlining the point, maybe with hyperbole, just to, to, to try and bring attention to this key secret, is that the mind must be kept pure and clean, in other words, spiritual. Or, or you will have the dirtiness and the cancer and, and the evil and the, the bullying and the, the sense of loss and lack and anxiety. You will have all of that come out of this distorted mind. But if the mind is pure, then everything, everything, that you have, everything that you do, everything that you experience, all of your perceptions, will be cleansed before anything gets into your being. All of the pills that we take and, and, and various practices that we do to make us healthy are secondary. They may or may not reduce symptoms. Perhaps they do. But they're secondary. The, the primary cause of everything wrong in our lives 
is wrong-mindedness, by which I mean negativity. Those people that do understand this accept, as a matter of faith, the existence of a transcendental aspect of life. And all comes out of that. This is accepted, and it cannot be proved. Faith has to exist without proof, or it could not be faith. If it's provable, it's not faith, it's knowledge. Do we want faith to exist? If we do, then we must have it unprovable. So, a scientist who says that this is not true is, is simply showing a lack of faith. They have faith that reality can be measured and demonstrated. That's their faith. There's no proof of that. In fact, even scientists have proved the opposite is true, that we just don't know. This is a long time in, in our psyche of science that we just don't know what's going on. Um, Heisenberg made that clear a hundred years ago. So that's the scientific faith. The, the faith that we have is that it's not scientific. It's based on mind. The mind is the supreme leader of all of our experiences. And our one duty, in a sense, our one spiritual practice, in another sense, is to clarify the mind of negativity, to purify any negative thoughts out of our mind. So if somebody does us harm, we assume that we've attracted it. And it's our responsibility to deal with it, and we don't react against them. If there's um, two different people, one is a good person, one is a bad person, we just observe that without judgment. We make the call that it's good and bad, but it's, it's not an emotional experience, and it's certainly not blame. We have to walk a very thin line, indeed, between two states of being. One is angry and blameful and, and, and frightened and, and anxious and, and, and so on. And the other is sanctimonious and pompous and obedient to some perceived law that was written down 2,000 years ago and so on. And, and, and you know, the one and the other, they're, they're actually equally damaging in a way. Um, our line has to be between all of that. We have to be realistic. There has to be a political aspect to our understanding of the world, because the world needs to be administered. Therefore, there will be politics. Therefore, there will be lies. Not much we can do about that. If we put our attention on that, we get caught up in the negativity. That's what we can do about that. You don't give your attention to something if it's bad and you can't do anything about it. Why would you? Why would you do that? Why would you focus on something that's not doing you any good and you can't help? It's foolishness. Equally, we, we, you know, we, we give a peripheral attention to the political scenario so that we kind of know what's happening. And we give peripheral attention to the religionists as well so we know what they believe and, and so on. And, and just to see which bits of, of both worlds we, we, want to embrace, and then blink ourselves in a sense against that. I, I don't really mean blinkering, just protect ourselves from the sanctimoniousness of religionists and the lies of politicians. And, and we focus on the white dove, the, the, which means that we focus on the transcendental. <clears throat> and, and we know about that because it, it shows itself in its characteristic form which is peacefully and beautifully and harmoniously and forgivingly and lovingly. That's when we know we're in the presence of the Holy Spirit, when we have that feeling. And such feelings of these are often very subtle. And we, we need to make our perception more sensitive, and we need to look for clues. And people will, will talk, and they will charm, and they will persuade us that they're good people doing the same thing that we want to do. And yet, then you look at the actions that they carry out and the people that surround them 
and you realize that their words do not authentically represent what they are. You have to look at what somebody does, look at what somebody is surrounded by to know who they are and whether they're okay for us. Because we can't hang out with people who are not okay for us without being tarnished and tainted by them. It's very easy, it's a slippery slope to go down when we hang out with people that are, are just bad. We, we get to be bad too. And by bad, I mean bad for us. It Mentally destructive. We must avoid that if we're to be safe. And we must um, align ourselves with the principles of gentle, sensitive beauty and goodness if we are to be protected from the damaging implications of these forces in the world that have dominated pretty much most of it. Very few people in terms of percentage terms have actually made this discovery. And it's taught generally throughout the ages by a spiritual inspired person, which then is turned into a religion. The first wisdom may well be spot on, but the, the religion itself is always corrupted. Make up your own mind.